Top stories, investors say Ethiopian leather industry is lucrative. African countries are called to make extra effort for better education in science and technology. And IGAD warns South Sudanese fractions against any trust breach. Hello and welcome to ABC News. I'm on the Menangada. The World Economic Forum is dwelling on a number of current global issues in Davos, Switzerland. Prime Minister Haile Mariam de Saling, who is in attendance of the international event, has taken part in discussions on African power supply and other related issues, according to permanent representative of Ethiopia to the United Nations and other international organizations in Switzerland, Ambassador Nagash Kibret. On the sidelines of the forum, the Premier held discussions with CEO of Trafigura Group Jeremy Weir. During the discussion, Weir expressed interest to work with Ethiopia in the areas of power supply and mining sector. The Premier also held talks with Alan Angler, CEO of the End Fund, on cooperation with the Organization for Combating Neglected Tropical Diseases. Ambassador Nagash Kovret has also reminded the World Economic Forum Ethiopia hosted in 2012 was successful. Minister of Foreign Affairs Dr. Warkanah Gabayo conferred with his Norwegian counterpart in Ericsson Sorait here in Addis Ababa on Wednesday. Apart from broadening bilateral relations between Ethiopia and Norway, the ministers have dwelt on regional security and common global efforts. The Norwegian side wants Ethiopian government to strengthen its dialogue with opposition party groups, which is said to have great significance for respect of human rights in the country. Ethiopia and Norway are keen to strengthen the already existing cooperation in education, health, climate change and peace and security, among others, in the Horn of Africa. The Norwegian foreign minister is the first woman to hold the post in the Nordic country. We can now see that corruption has devastated Africa. Officials abusing authority vested in them. We have now realized that the private sector, perhaps it's even the worst player of corruption on the continent of Africa. If the women speak up about any corruption at home and she raises the positive values within the home, if the civil society monitors all the mechanisms with reference to our governments, if every one of us speaks and name and shame and change the culture of uh, this culture of corruption. Renewed action from both African governments and international partners. begin to do things in a proper manner at our own level because it is our combined effort that will make us do the right thing. Now, African countries are called to make extra effort to succeed in women's science and technology education. A sideline meeting focusing on girls' education in engineering and technical and vocational education was held at the AU headquarters, as Abraham Asrat reports. The issue of accessibility of education for girls and their employability is still a challenge in Africa. Quality education in this regard plays a pivotal role in marking a paradigm shift in the area in the continent. We believe that there is no way this continent can move forward without the right quality, like you've already said, the right quality education. People have degrees, master's degrees, but they cannot get employed. Why? Because so far, our educational system has been classical, you know, going to the university, obtaining a degree. Investing in education is the most important thing we can do to promote sustainable development. Giving all boys and girls in all countries a high-quality education is the best investment we can make for our future. 
Nelson Mandela once said that education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. During the event, governments in Africa were urged to put their utmost effort to ensure accessibility of quality education, especially in engineering and technology on the continent. More than half of Africa's population, it's about Africa's population now is 1.2 billion. About 700 million is under the age of 25. Their future is being determined now. Because the majority of these are in school, in colleges, that is where their, their future is now being determined. But most do not have access to quality education. The event for the most part advocated accessibility of marketable skills for girls and women on the continent among many other things. The African Union Commission is set to launch the first AU Agenda 2063 flagship project, the Single African Air Transport Market in Addis Ababa. The launch is scheduled on 20th, uh, 28th of January 2018 as a historic event at the African Union Summit nearly two decades after the adoption of the 1999 Yamoussoukro decision. The Ethiopian Ministry of Transport and Ethiopian Airlines Group in a joint press conference on Tuesday announced their full support toward the realization of AU's Single African Skies Initiative. Ahmed Shidi, Ethiopian Ministry of Transport, said the initiative would pave the way for other flagship projects such as the free trade area and the free movement of people. Being one of the AU's Agenda 2063 flagship projects to be launched, <coughs> Single African Air transport market will pave the way for other flagship projects such as free trade area and the free movement of people. Ethiopia has always been one of the pioneers promoters of the open skies in Africa and accordingly it is also one of the 11 champions countries that declared solemn commitment to establishing a single African air transport market. Tolda Gabramarem, CEO of Ethiopian Airlines Group, also dubbed the initiative as a huge milestone for the continent. We are very happy to have you this afternoon in this historical day for Ethiopia. And uh, as uh, an aviation leader, uh, we are also happy to see the African Union and the continent of Africa on the 28th of January to, to declare full implementation of the previous Yamasokuru declaration and the single African uh, skies and a single African market. Uh, obviously, this is a huge milestone for the continent. Council of Africa calls for, for prompt implementation of continental free trade area to encourage youth entrepreneurship on the continent. Pan-African Youth Summit 2018 is happening here in Addis Ababa. Kfleyu Sabebe reports. Council of Africa, an organization geared to youth empowerment, says Africa's local resources are vital to boost up its economy. The council also emphasized that continental free trade area is instrumental to increase exchange of goods and entrepreneurial ideas on the continent. We can use the local knowledge, we can use the local resources, we can actually use the local markets we have to generate the kind of revenues we need as a continent to be self-sustaining. And that's why we loved the idea of the continental free trade area. As Pan-African Youth Summit 2018 is happening here in Addis Ababa, participants said Pan-Africanism should target youth empowerment to realize economic liberty of the continent. Pan-Africanism has shifted from being a movement for liberation for independence. Now is a liberation for economic independence in Africa. It is now a movement where our young Africans should not leave Africa in search of a better future in another man's land. They should come back home and know that Africa is a home to all and be the change they seek and build their continent and make Africa a home for others to come and visit. So for me, I always make sure that youth should be at the forefront of development. Youth should be used as a cornerstone for change. 
Some say women participation in Africa is still progressing. Right now, we are changing the narrative. We are having women presidents in Africa. We are having women frontiers in the diplomatic world. We are having women frontiers in the military session and all facets of life. So women now are no more subject to the kitchen and subject to inequality. I think that the ideal of women and participation and women um, empowerment has come far. Yet there is still much to be done when it's come to involving women in business and politics. We must actually start changing from the basics not looking at up to the level of the CEOs. We need to start looking at the very factors of production that sustain our livelihood. If the women cannot have access to them, how do we expect them to prosper? If the women cannot compete favorably in politics, how do we expect their issues to be addressed adequately in the corridors of power. The summit continues to deliberate on use empowerment, gender equality and climate change for the coming two days. Now, IGAD Council of Ministers warns of potential punitive measure against any breach of ceasefire by the South Sudanese warring parties. The warring parties convened in Addis Ababa for a three-day workshop on cessation of hostilities agreement. Sadat Mohamed Sani reports. Following Egypt's peace process revitalization, warring parties in South Sudan signed a ceasefire deal on 21st December of last year to allow humanitarian access to civilians caught in the fighting. The move marked the latest attempt to end a devastating civil war that began in 2013. <laughs> Unfortunately, South Sudan's army and anti-government rebels have both accused one another of violating a ceasefire just hours after it came into effect. City Sam, a body responsible of monitoring the two parties' complaints with the agreement, has submitted partial report of violation to IGAD. On a workshop organized to orient the warring parties about the agreement, IGAD hinted to take serious consequence on the violators. Representing chairperson of IGAD Council of Ministers, Ambassador Mohamed Duri told the EBC that the monitoring body's report will not be a usual one. Some of the reports have been uh, presented to the IGAD Council and others will be compiled and presented. And this time, the, the, the IGAD is very serious, the international community is very serious on this issue. Um, there will be uh, punitive actions against violators. This is the way we have decided. Regardless of the disappointing violations of the agreement, the second phase of the revitalization forum will proceed next February, IGAD disclosed. We are now committed to have real peace a sustainable peace in South Sudan. And if there are violators, we are willing to name them, to shame them, and to transfer this information to the African Union, up to the United Nations Security Council, and if necessary, to sanction the individuals. In 2011, South Sudan has declared a hard-fought independence with so many promises. But the country has disintegrated into chaos. Thousands of people have been killed and almost 2 million people displaced in a civil conflict that erupted in late 2013. Now, Taiwan-based George Shoe Company says Ethiopian leather industry is highly lucrative. Meanwhile, Leather Industry Development Institute says efforts are being exerted to make the sector more rewarding for local and foreign companies like George Shoe Company. Abraham Asrat has a full account. Starting production last year in Mojo Town, Taiwan-based George Shoe Company is already witnessing encouraging results, benefiting some 500,000 USD every month from exporting finished laser. Company general manager says the huge livestock in Ethiopia makes their business so lucrative. Our next phase is getting ready, which is basically for the shoes, leather articles, gloves, etc. And that is going to be completed in the next two years. And we are going to uh, make plan is that we'll be doing 30,000 shoes a day. So far, the company has created some 900 jobs for Ethiopians. 
the company is growing. I joined it considering its benefits and the prospectors. I'm benefiting from working here now that I'm paid every month. I'm advancing my education. With number one livestock population in Africa, Ethiopia is working to benefit more from the laser industry. The country, of course, is not benefiting in parallel with its huge livestock resources. However, current gains are cheering as many investors are engaging in leather processing, shoes, leather outfits, and glove manufacturing. Leather contribution to the national GDP is also immense. The country is said to get higher benefits from the sector, thereby speeding up its industrial transformation. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.